Find out on this episode of Light Exposing Darkness. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us today on LED Live. Today actually is live. Usually we do a lot of pre recorded premieres and stuff like that, but today is a special day because a lot of people are celebrating Halloween, so we know a lot of people are watching scary movies, horror movies, and you know, we don't we don't talk a lot about horror movies on this channel because it's pretty obvious. If it's horror movies yeah. full of violence and the occult and things like that, a lot of murder and stuff, but we have a guest on our show today. Her name is Mia. She's uh, got a lot of, what, what, are you, what do you do? I am a mental health first aid instructor and I also am a mental health coaching consultant. Awesome, so yeah. it's awesome to have you on the show because we're gonna actually be talking about your brain on scary movies. So That's right. what happens to your mind when you watch these movies? Does anything happen? Is it just entertainment? Does it right. affect us in any kind of way? We talk about this stuff all the time on this show. We actually have a full length documentary called Pseudology. If you wanna check that out, it's, it, uh, the whole documentary comes from the aspect of science, psychology. We removed completely the spiritual aspect of it because we want it to be something you can show a skeptic. Like, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in that anyway. Well, here's just the raw scientific facts. What happens to your brain right. when you're being entertained by these things? So this is a, actually a presentation that you've put together. So let's, yeah. uh, let's see what the first slide is here. All right, awesome. And I just want to say, I'm so glad that we are talking about this. You know, yeah. mental health is really big right now. A lot of people have questions and they're wondering like, why is all of a sudden everybody depressed? Or why are there so many people experiencing anxiety? So the fact that we all are taking the time mm -hmm. to just kind of look deeper into this, especially yeah. from that media lens, I think is so yeah. relevant and so important. And so one of the big questions that came up for me as you know, I was preparing for this is like, why do people like scary movies, you know? Mm, and that's a really big one because for me, someone whose life has been a scary movie, like I was telling mm. you all my story about, you know, just being a survivor of rape and trauma and yeah. even my own sister actually being abducted. Wow. And so I'm so grateful that we got my sister back. But when I think about scary movies, for me, it's like, this isn't fake, this is real. People yeah. are actually living these stories, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's crazy to see how they don't think about the families of the people when they're mm. reenacting. A lot of these movies that you're seeing, it's not just out of their brain. These mm. are stories that they've researched and pulled together of people's real horror, things that actually happen. Yeah, like mm -hmm. what you're saying, is, I'm, I'm identifying with that too because a year ago we lost our daughter wow. and we were, you know, you see media and stuff. I don't. We don't really sit down and watch a lot of stuff, but you go to people's houses and you see it, and there's a comedy on, and somebody drops dead, and it's like supposed to be funny, and it's right. like there's mm. nothing funny about this. Right. And it, it totally changed my mind about that kind of stuff because that would have been something that I would have laughed about a right. year before that, you know. Right. But uh, yeah, it's mm. different when you've lived it. Exactly. So exactly. I know. I used to be obsessed with horror movies. I was gothic, metalhead, all that. All mm. I did was watch horror movies. That, right. The, the more gruesome, the better, and that's a good right. question. Like, why are we drawn to that? I know you were into that stuff too, right? Yeah, I pretty much grew up on scary movies. Yeah. I watched them since I was little, so wow. I don't really think I ever considered the why. Mm -hmm. I just did. It was just interesting, um, just captivated my attention longer, right. um, but I was afraid to sleep, like, in my own bed yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, so it was really scary. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is really interesting, and I just want to read it for you guys. So this is coming from the research. Um, it's called the Journal of Media and Psychology, and they said basically there are actually three reasons why people like scary movies. One, you have tension, which is the shock factor, you know, the idea of, ah, oh, I'm going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And that shock factor can actually be really addicting, right? Because you're getting uh -huh. adrenaline, and then you're afraid, and then you're going to get dopamine because you're feeling better after the people that you care about are safe, right? Mm. And then another one, which is really huge, this one um, stuck out to me, was relevance, right? The idea that I can relate to this, right? Mm. So I remember being a survivor. Um, it felt good to know I wasn't alone. I wasn't the only person that had been abused or yeah. had been harmed. Like, and I don't want it to sound weird, but I know those who have experienced the same thing, this resonates with you. It's like you hear that it happened and you're sad, but then you're like, okay, I'm not by myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that relevance can sometimes play a part where 
you know, maybe on some level our lives are connecting to the scary movie. And then lastly, this one was, you know, just unrealism. Some people are literally entertained because it's fake, you know, yeah. and it's like, oh, that's hilarious how I already know this is fake. And it's just hilarious to see how they're going to play out the story. And so mm. these are some of the three main reasons that people can become you know just love scary movies or like to watch it it's interesting because some of these are like polar opposites that's like, true i right. can relate or this is completely fake yeah. tension you know i can kind of see that i was kind of like an adrenaline junkie as a mm -hmm. teenager and stuff and i know i have a personal friend he's skydived like over 100 times and right. there's got to wow. be some kind of adrenaline comes with that because you're like i could die like this parachute yeah. might not open up so yep. yeah i, I that's releasing something, some kind of dopamine in your mind, you're right. Absolutely, it? and also the idea that, you know, on some level you feel like, oh, I can outsmart the bad guy. Mm. I can, you're watching this movie and you're like, oh, she just needs to go down that way instead of this way, you know? Yeah. And because I thought of that, and that was a good idea, you know, there's a kind of reward for it. So you're getting a lot of rewards as you're watching oh. it. And then also even the idea that, oh, she went down that way and that was a good idea. And then she's killed, oh no, you know, even that, oh no, that happened. But then um, you're getting that relief too, like, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. And so it kind of drags you in and keeps you there. Like the plot twist stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, so how does that work with, um, like, cause most scary movies have twists at the end. That's Right. So you, you have like the nice, beautiful music, everybody's happy, right. and then like the screen starts panning a little bit, and then you right. see something lurking. So yeah. what do you like know why they do that in movies? Is it right. to reel you into the next se right. like yeah. series or? Right, right. So that's really good. Like, um, and this next part is talking about why are the scary movies bad for you? And that element that you're bringing up is perfect. In fact, you know that screechy sound that, oh, yeah. and that ha, 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 chi 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 ah ah ah. I don't know. That's the one I remember from those. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you did it perfect. That's what she's talking about. Yes, yeah. yes. So all of this is actually intentional because yeah. now it's activating your primitive brain, as they call it. You know that brain that gets into the fight or flight, right? Mm -hmm. That the part of that's meant to protect you and to help you and to remember when things are unsafe so that it can try to keep you safe. And so what's happening is that your prefrontal cortex, that whole space there is being bypassed, right? And they're using those sounds and things mm. like that to kind of get you into that mindset. That's true. I mean, if you hear a, a bug buzz by, you're like, whoa, you're instantly right. like, mm. and then, uh, you know, you hear a cat hiss or something, you know, like, oh, danger. Something. Yeah. It's, it's ingrained in us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was thinking of the movie The Exorcist, the first one. I heard right. that there was a lot of psychological stuff that they did in that. Right. Just doing the sounds alone, um, you know, you, you watch a movie without a score or without right. a sound, it looks completely like fake and it looks right. cheesy, but with uh, music really builds a lot. And they said that in that movie they would like shake up bees and make mm -hmm. them angry sounds and just they put all really? kinds of sounds yes. in there that would yes. mess with people's minds. So they were purposely psychologically messing with people. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I was looking at a study that talked about The Exorcist specifically, and it talked about it was one of the movies that had, had the highest shock factor oh. for a long time, that jump scare. It had it was one of the highest. You know, they've had some that have beat The Exorcist in later years, but it was um, the idea of God giving us that primitive brain, you know, that idea that we, we have to take care of ourselves. And when I say primitive, um, you know that your, your prefrontal cortex is responsible for, you know, being able to make decisions and make plans, whereas your primitive brain is more like the instinctual brain. Yeah. And so, like, imagine if you hear a baby crying, we are wired to respond, mm -hmm. you know? And so even some of those that sound is partially that sound of what a baby might sound like crying so you're going to respond and you're going yeah. to respond in a specific way right like even when I made this sound I don't know if you noticed but your heart probably started beating mm -hmm. just a little bit faster mm -hmm. you know so like you could well I'm not saying to do this but you could test it out and you would find it to happen yeah, yeah. Huh. So mm -hmm. are, are scary movies actually bad for you right right thank you for asking that so this is my answer yes and yes, and possibly no. And possibly. I just want to talk about that. Like, well, first of all, yes. Um, scary movies, they are desensitizing, 
right? Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you see this happen in therapy where it's called aversion therapy. The idea is to make someone not like something, right? But then you also have a sensitization where you just, you say the what happened to you over and over, and the idea is that it no longer has its effect on you, right? Mm -hmm. And so research, researchers have seen that this really happens when you're watching a scary movie. Now the issue for those of us who are Christian is that, hey, I'm getting used to seeing someone be stabbed to death. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What does that mean for me morally, mm -hmm. right? Um, what does it mean in terms of my empathy? You know, what kind of empathy do I have? Like that's just being like turned off, right? Mm -hmm. And then another thing is your health, right? Due to health reasons is one um, issue that can really Okay, think about this, like a, a roller coaster ride, right? A roller coaster ride is really fun. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because you're like almost simulating being in a car accident, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have um, a physiological response to being on that roller coaster. Well, the same thing is gonna happen when you're watching scary movies and some people have actually died, mm -hmm. right? And it's usually, honestly, and it's not something that would be, just like it's not very common for someone to die because they've been on a roller coaster ride, mm -hmm. it's not really common that you're gonna die because you watched a scary movie. However, people who have underlying health conditions are really at high risk mm. because now you have increased blood pressure, mm. includes blood, close bl blood glucose levels, um, and then you have all these, um, your heart is pumping faster, right? And so people have actually had heart attacks, depending. That's interesting you brought that up because rides, they have the sign right there. If you're right. pregnant, if you're, mm -hmm. you exactly. know, have heart trouble, don't ride this ride, but exactly. movies don't really come with that warning. No. But I'm starting to see they kind of do now. I'm starting to see a lot of trigger warnings at the beginning of things and even just like epileptic. epileptic. This has a lot of yeah. strobing and right. stuff. Mm. But the trigger warning thing is big. Um, something you said on that. What was the last slide you went on there? Mm -hmm. You said, um, yeah, the empathy. So I've, I've experienced that. And that's how the people, they get people to overcome fears. Just mm -hmm. face your fears. Mm -hmm. Just hold this spider in your hand mm -hmm. and you won't be as, as afraid of it. So what is that doing, like you said, when you see somebody being murdered over and over and over, you're not gonna be fearful of that, seeing right. that, it's just gonna maybe even entertain you. And I remember seeing, uh, this was years ago, somebody was like stabbed in, in the middle of the city mm. and nobody reported it. People exactly. actually were watching it. Exactly. And, and there was another case of a kid that was, a special needs kid that was drowning, mm -hmm. and there was some teenagers that were recording it and laughing. Absolutely. Like imagine, who no, in their yeah. right mind responds that way? Somebody's dying in front of you, you don't laugh and record it, but that's where we've been desensitized mm -hmm. through things like jackass. I grew up right. on that, like getting hurt is funny. Right. You know, right. And, and, and being entertained by murder and stuff through horror movies, I definitely see the danger in that. Well, absolutely. I mean, we've seen it where people have just taken out their phones mm -hmm. while someone is being abused. You know what I'm saying? And the mm -hmm. idea isn't even, I'm taking out my phone to call 911. Right. I'm taking out so I can post this on social media. But I also believe that, you know, the news has a big part to play in that too, because when a crime happens, they're showing more and more of it mm -hmm. and it's no longer considered distasteful. And so there you have that desensitization of, of your response to problems. Um, I remember watching, uh, there was a, another article I was looking at, and you know how in scary movies, um, sometimes they always have that grin, right? I don't know how to do it, but it's like the, the scary, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to make my face do it, but it's that scary grin, right? Mm. And so there was, in this study, they looked at different monkeys, and um, the monkeys, they were trying to see how long it would take before they respond to different types of faces. And so the face that it took the longest to be desensitized to was that grin that you see on those scary movies where it's kind of like a smile. I think about that clown. Mm -hmm. Like an evil like smile. Sinister. Yeah, it's like, oh, an like, evil, it, yeah. it's like an evil smile. And that's the one that your brain actually took the longest to actually become desensitized to, huh. right? Yeah. It's like the brain knew like this is, this is, this is not right, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, even though I easily got desensitized to some of the other things they were doing, that grin. And if you think about it, when you see it on a scary movie, it just evokes something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. So what you said, I, I found an article, if you skip ahead, that, from Psychology Today, and it says, Martin 2019, in a review of 96 studies, found that increased pleasure and desire for watching scary films were correlated to less fear and less empathy. So mm -hmm. here's Psychology Today saying exactly what you said, that watching these movies and being taking pleasure in them um, actually desensitizes you. You have less empathy. 
says men appeared to enjoy horror films more than women who are more empathetic and more prone to anxiety and disgust. This is just huh. naturally how we're wired. You know, women are more like the kid falls down, the woman wants to go over there and nurture them, and the, and the dad's like, you know, rub some dirt in it. You know. And can I even add to that? Women are also going to be more likely to be the victim of a crime. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah men are more uh, likely to fight and defend themselves. It says, uh, furthermore, individuals with higher manipulativeness and deceitfulness scores e exhibited decreased sadness and disgust while watching these movies. Not surprisingly, people with more antisocial personality disorder traits and lower empathy preferred graphically violent, scary films. So people that have mm -hmm. less empathy anyway, they want to see more and more. Show me more. Mm -hmm. Show me more guts. I want it mm -hmm. the gorier the better. Yeah. And here it said that people who are uh, more deceptive and things, they had decreased sadness and disgust. So something that should make you sad, seeing right. somebody lose their life, should right. sadden you, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're not uh, you know, displaying any sadness at all or disgust. Right. All that should be repulsive to us, you know? It's so true, and yeah. I was actually looking at another um, article, and it was saying, I think this was in Mayo Clinic, it talked about how people are actually more afraid of psychologically scary movies than, say, um, movies that are just like the scare factor, like, ah, I popped right. out of a closet, mm -hmm. yeah. but things that actually make you imagine something bad mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. things that are actually more realistic, more likely to happen, those had a greater effect on people as well. Are there some yeah. examples? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I didn't grow up on scary movies right. and what what were some examples that um, you know of that are like psychological scary movies men actually I want to be like you you know I don't have an actual example of psychologically scary movies because once I learned about little light and your amazing work <laughs> mm. I stopped watching so many things and so I'm really glad but um if I was to just go off the top of my head one that used to really scare me was Chucky Oh. Yeah. And somebody, uh, yeah, yeah, right? Like, so Chucky coming out of the closet and the way they would set it up, you know, like I remember as a kid, because they have it set up like, this is your room. Mm -hmm. I'm in your room. This is what a typical little girl's room looks like, you know? And now, boom, Chucky's coming out, you know? So yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm... Like yeah. Children play with, the doll is now yeah. trying to right. murder you. Yeah. And, and yeah, if a kid gets exposed to that, yeah. then they're yeah. going to be scared to be in their own room. Right, right. right. that's actually where... Um, like for me, watching movies like Scream yeah. or Chucky, okay. that stuff doesn't scare me okay. because it's like an actual person mm. trying to kill someone. You're desensitized. Yes, <laughs> I am. So what I would normally yeah. go for is like Insidious mm. or The Conjuring huh. or okay. Boogeyman. And Some those are things that are yeah, apparent. Funny, so, like... Like, funny you say that because paranormal, like, activity, that movie did not scare me. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, man, one star. Yeah. You know, but it's like things that are more dealing with the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You don't really, it, it's a weird, distorted yeah. figure. Um, it's just, it, it has supernatural powers. Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff were the things that really scared me. And I think mm -hmm. that goes along the lines of the psychological effect wow. versus the ones where it's just scream. Like, it's like, oh, no, he's in your closet. Mm -hmm. Or Damn. Boogeyman, he's under your bed. And it's just like, I don't know. I got desensitized to those really, really quick. Can I say this? And this may sound like, I don't know. I don't know if it sounds lame, okay? You can tell me. <laughs> but a movie that actually did scare me before I stopped watching um, movies was The Matrix, actually. Really? Um, uh -huh. To me, that movie was scary in the sense that this idea that there's some alternate reality that uh -huh. you're not aware of that's happening in the background, you know? Uh -huh. I feel like that messed with my mind more. Yeah. It made me question what's going on around me and put me in a sense of fear yeah. and what's going to happen. And so even though Matrix wouldn't be classified as a scary movie, that's kind of what I'm speaking about too, that, you know, it's it, the reality of it or psychologically what's going on that you aren't aware of, that you can't prepare for because you can't even access that dimension, that kind of thing. You know, you know I want to mm -hmm. say something real quick. I, I have some slides in here that's mm -hmm. going to talk about different serial killers that have actually popped out from watching scary movies mm -hmm. but I excluded an example mm. for the matrix Whoa. because I thought it was uh, that wasn't That's really good. a horror movie so I'm not going to include that one but there actually has been serial killers that said I became a serial killer after I watched the matrix because the, of how That's it was presenting violence and stuff and I thought huh that's not a good example so I threw it out but wow. that's interesting yes. that you should say that yes yes I absolutely I think that's a good uh, example of like a psychological thriller or some sci-fi because yeah if you didn't know that you were being used as some human battery and you're in a pod 
con you know, mm -hmm. creating energy for aliens or whatever. That's exactly. pretty crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. So did did you have no okay? So um, was there a slide of yours before this? Or is this um, slide? Let's see. No, oh, yeah, I yeah. think so. Well, this is just talking about it again for those of you who are nerds like myself, and you're like, okay, what's happening to my brain exactly? You know, just um, sharing this with you. It says that scary movies they bypass the conscious parts of your brain and tap directly into your fight or flight response. Okay, and a lot of people we've heard about the amygdala and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. basically this is just letting us know that um, your brain, the part of your brain that's responsible for seeing if things look like a threat and so it's pumping oxygen into your mm. muscles in case you need to fight and run and so we pretty much know all those different things but all of this is actually happening while you're watching a scary movie wow. and in fact man I was actually just listening to something on my way here and it was saying how in the future movies are gonna look different even horror movies they're getting to the place where now you're gonna be able to put on a oh, device man. and yeah. based on how you physically respond to it like whether you jerk or flinch or what ha what kind of parts of your brain actually light up in the fmri scan um they will know now what type of it's kind of like choose your adventure type of thing oh, like oh wow. this part of your brain lit up in the fmri and so mm, now mm. this is what's going to happen in the movie and it, it was it was crazy. amazing yeah so if you see somebody coming here and you turn now they're going to insert something yeah. else over here behind you or the, something mm -hmm. and wow. they were saying it like the new editor the new editors or publishers of movies aren't going to be the film writers it's going to be the person watching it wow. pretty oh much and they're going to be doing it on based on how your brain responds have you seen those mm -hmm. ai videos that they create that. Yeah. and it zooms in and it creates different characters and stuff yeah there's a artificial mm -hmm. intelligence can create pictures oh, but wow. now it creates videos and it can zoom in so it can make a picture I saw one of hell, the guy wanted to know what hell looked like. And so you see like all this fire and stuff and it zooms, 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 but as it's zooming in, it's creating more stuff. It's an endless creation mm -hmm. coming at you and it's just like this endless Crazy. zoom thing. So Which is a huge scary. problem. Yeah, it's a huge problem because our brains know no different. You know, yeah. like our brain, the reason our brains are responding where we talked about the oxygen and the amygdala is because the brain knows no different. It's not looking at this and saying, oh, it's a movie because that part of the brain has been bypassed. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's mm -hmm. actually responding as though this is really happening to mm -hmm. me. So yeah, yeah to, to prove your point there, the next slide um, from medium.com, totally not a, a Christian website at all, mm -hmm. so there's no bias. This is completely secular sources. And it says, it's not just a movie. That's what we hear all the time. It's just mm -hmm. a movie. I don't even know what that means. It's just a movie, so it can show terrible things in it. But it says, it's not just a movie, how television shapes our brains. Television puts us into a hypnotic state. Wow. What does that mean for us? Mm -hmm. uh, it says, movies and television shows allow us to vicariously experience lives far removed from our own. From tragic love stories to historical epics, we peek into another world, but we're not actually experiencing it, right? And then highlighted here, it says, while we may not be physically entrenched in our favorite film, research from neuroscience and psychology suggests that movies and television can impact us just as much as real life experiences. Scientists have long known that television can affect children's verbal, uh, physical, cognitive, and emotional development. Absolutely. Does it say physical? Wow, really physical. Mm -hmm. Cognitive and emotional development. How can a movie have this much power on our development? Because movies and television can penetrate our subconscious mind. The content can inspire, challenge, and heal our psyche, or heal our psyche. So depending mm -hmm. on what you're watching. Exactly. Um, some things can be beneficial. I, I've talked about this before on the show, but I remember watching uh, a collage of people doing kind acts of kindness, right. watching with my daughter. And there was like 10 things where people were given uh, helping the homeless and things right. like that and it really inspired me like after that right. movie I, or after the little show I was like Lily let's go do something like I really yeah. want to do that and I was like imagine if television as much as I hate censorship and all that imagine if we lived in a world where only acts of kindness were shown on mm -hmm. television wow. that's your only option to watch that or go experience real life but how different would the world be? Mm -hmm. Man, that's powerful. And when I think about it, I think about um, role playing and modeling, you know, yeah. like, and it's power in making pathways in our brain so that um, we will learn how to respond in ways, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can 
when we think about role play, role play, you're gonna teach me how to be more assertive, let's say, right? And so you, I will be you, you will be me, and you act out the idea that, hey, um, this is what it would look like to be more assertive if you're being bullied, right? Mm. So that's a good thing. Mm. But in these movies, especially when we're talking about scary movies and horror, let's consider that this idea of role playing is actually happening as well and yeah. where you're going to learn certain behaviors and responses your brain is actually going to make these pathways and patterns which you all do great work talking about that as well that this is how i'm going to respond if this happens and because it bypassed right mm. this is going into this is my automatic response of how i'm going to do this, that, or the other. I'm mm -hmm. sitting here thinking of video games all the way. Man. Oh man, because video games are huge. Uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I wanted to know. Um, so the amygdala, the purpose of it yeah. is to detect fear. It's like gives us that response to fear. So is there? I guess is it possible that when you're watching scary movies, um, you get this fear response, but then you real like you remember that it's fake right. could that ever impact you in a real life scenario where like if you're just mm. sitting in front of tv all the time just watching like you know you get scared and then you realize it's fake and you're just watching it happen to somebody else does your brain ever get to the point where if you were in a situation like that in real life let's say somebody was chasing you would it ever i guess decide to not respond yes. because you're being chased right or wow. just kind of i don't know shut down a bit well, that's a really great question. Um, I want to talk about it from this way. I think about, like, so you talked about video games and we talked about, like, looking at the scary movies. I think about the power of muscle memory as mm. well, right? So we know that's happening because of the different pathways in our mm -hmm. brain. So imagine if we're watching something, um, we're going to be trained on how to respond. So in the movie, if I'm understanding your question correctly, most times we're being trained really on how to respond to something that's happening or we're being conditioned mm -hmm. right to not respond which is mm -hmm. what i hear you saying i could see that definitely happening where maybe we walk into a situation that should feel dangerous or should feel um inappropriate and yet because we've been desensitized to it we don't have that response now whether or not you will no longer do that primitive brain and do a fight flight freeze or flop that is a really good question yeah. i'm not really sure it will probably depend on the individual and how much their brain has been damaged honestly mm -hmm. by the things that they're allowing themselves to do mm -hmm. when i think about video games that muscle memory right your your brain is learning shoot shoot mm -hmm. you know yeah. like stab run jump out of the window whatever you know and so it's it's being um automatically primed for those types of things it reminds me of that that news article i heard about that kid that kid that got arrested put in uh, jail they put saddam right beside the, the deputy and then he because he said i played grand theft auto he took the guys took the deputy's gun shot him shot the other guy wow. and got out of the thing he said how did you learn to do that how did you learn to hey decide you're going to grab the guy's gun and get out of there he said Absolutely. oh i've been playing games yeah. I've been yeah. playing video games. Yeah, yeah, and imagine the like when it's virtual reality and you're moving your hands, talk about muscle right. memory, you know, you're doing this now. Here's another example. When I was out, I lived out in Hawaii for about three years. Uh, big, big time militarized mm. area out there. I had friends that would come and go constantly. And one of my buddies, uh, that was he was younger, his dad had come to us and said, hey, would you let him stay with you? I want him to have good influence and right. everything. He was, he was uh, maybe 17, 18, and I said, sure, as long as you, since he's a minor, stay right. with him too. So right. they, they rented two rooms from me. It mm -hmm. was a big house. We had a, a rented uh, area out there. So I sublet to them, and, they, um, and, and I remember his son played games 24-7, wow. I mean, just all the time, every day, played every gaming. Fact, moment. Yeah, he, he said, can I set up the garage? I want to ha have a gaming center down there. I said, sure, set up the garage down there. And so he set up the garage, played games, and when he turned 18, the military came and they said, because you're so good at the controller, we're going to have you fly drones. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. He yeah. got a job flying drones for the military yep. because he had programmed his brain so well yeah. to react right. in war situations. Right. Exactly. And I mean, it makes me think about simulations, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what the Air Force does, yeah. the Army does? As a soldier, you're going to go through simulations before you are out there on the field on how you are to respond starting from here. Um, in a particular situation. So yeah, people Absolutely. spend hours a day playing a murder simulator. Mm -hmm, not exactly. a flight simulator, not a driving simulator, but a murder simulator. Yeah. Yeah, the, the article continues um, on the next slide, or is this the next one? 
The, I think this is the next one. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, it says, um, movies and television put you into a hypnotic state. Now, this is not Little Light talking. This isn't right. Christian bias not here. Right this now. is science here. Mm -hmm. Movies and television put you into a hypnotic state. Within seconds of turning on the TV, our brain waves lower to an alpha state, which is where we are most impressionable. The information we see or hear on the television, whether it's the news or a fiction film, works on our subconscious mind. What does that mean? What we believe, so what we believe, how we perceive the world and ourselves, our values, our aspirations, all of this can be reconfigured by what we watch on TV. Come on, like people, this is science, dude. You cannot deny this stuff has been studied. Now scientists know that these changes occur on a neurological level. Watching TV can change how much we use certain brain areas and how these brain regions develop. Exactly. For example, watching more TV can increase the size of the visual cortex and the sensor monitor, sensor motor, mm -hmm. sensor motor uh, corti cortices. 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 Mm -hmm. However, it can also negatively impact the activity of the frontal, the front frontopolar mm -hmm. regions of the brain which is associated with intelligence. Mm -hmm, exactly. Now it's affecting your intelligence. As disturbing as this may sound, watching TV isn't all bad. It can also expand our experiences when we go into a hypnotic state. <sighs> and so this is huge because as you're reading that article, a few things are jumping out to me, right? So in the mental health space right now, hypnotism is getting huge. Oh, it's really big. And you know, this is a problem. A lot of times um, when you see people that are specializing in hypnotism, um, number one, they say that anybody can hypnotize you. Mm -hmm. And so there's no um, medical research backing this for real. They'll come up with, okay, I shouldn't say it like that. What I should say is um, they will have, um, research that backs and says that well but based on the experiences of these people you know these were the outcomes and we do see hypnotism having a quote unquote positive effects on people so people have had pain relief because of hypnotism they've been able to have childbirth without pain mm -hmm. because of hypnotism mm -hmm. and so this looks like a good thing but one of the biggest things they'll say in the mental health space is no one can be hypnotized unless you allow it no right. one can be hypnotized unless you choose it. You can only be hypnotized if you do, but here this article is showing us that this can happen without you even being aware. Right. You know, and now that is a huge problem because when you're tapping into your subconscious mind, this is where you're going to, it's gonna be like, a um, imagine a, a, a ladder right mm -hmm. and so you have your primitive brain at the bottom we're in a we're in a dollhouse okay mm -hmm. so you have your um you have your primitive brain at the bottom and you have your um your what you call your intel let's call it your intelligent brain at the top right that's your prefrontal cortex making decisions making plans um, reasoning all of that is there and in between this staircase here um you have basically that I'm gonna call it like your sub, that subconscious space that connects the two, right? And what can be happening when you're being hypnotized is imagine like a little child, you know, the those little dividers that they call them when you don't want your child to go somewhere mm -hmm. and you like put the little gate yeah. down. Yeah. Okay, so now hypnotism is kind of cutting that off, right? And now we're able to like kind of suggest whatever wow. we want to go in there. But the problem is your prefrontal cortex isn't able to assess it and decide whether or not this is what we want, this is what is good for us, is mm -hmm. the outcome. And so it can be very dangerous. And I believe that that is a big reason why we do see people deciding to create um to do acts of murder yeah. pretty mm -hmm. much you know like you said in the story with the young man because that gate isn't there yeah like we're all of us here or the gate is there or isn't there depending on the situation yeah right so we we talk a lot about um guarding the avenues of the soul right. not putting things in front of your mind and and so it can happen unexpectedly i mean i can be watching some great research or mm -hmm. a sermon on YouTube right. and all of a sudden add three, two, one, mm -hmm. pop. And now all of a sudden you see Victoria's Secret on the screen. Yeah. I didn't choose to put that in front of my face, but because now my eyes have seen it, I can't get that out of my mind now. Right. Now it's been in, in, um, imprinted on my mind, if you will. And so, yeah, when you're watching movies, even if you're willfully going into that theater, you don't know what's going to happen. That's exactly. kind of the whole point of going. You don't want right. spoilers. Don't tell me what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you're exposing yourself to all that stuff. And uh, it's definitely having an effect. Yeah.
Yeah, and I would even say, um, and I, I wish I could remember the name of this, but there was like an inspirational story I remember that came out. It was supposed to be a, a Christian story. Um, and in this story, um, the child goes into the forest and unfortunately they're murdered. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of the story is the father coming to forgive the people that did mm -hmm. this. But I remember feeling really traumatized by it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and the, I mean, I'm sure that that happened because of our situation with our family. It was a real thing that, you know, happened to our family, except that we got my sister back. But on top of that, watching that movie, um, it kind of put in your mind what this would be like, you know, you kind of like reliving it. Mm -hmm. And while um, some associations are going to say, oh, when you watch movies, when you watch scary movies, it's not gonna cause you to have PTSD. But imagine people who are suffering from PTSD mm -hmm. now coming in and watching it. And a lot of times, people who suffer from PTSD, they don't realize it till they're triggered, mm -hmm. you know? And something happens and they're like, oh my goodness, and they're taken to that place, that place of darkness or fear where things happen for them, you yeah, know? Yeah, I want you to remember that PTSD because there's a slide mm -hmm. on here that kind of goes into that. But yeah, let's see, Medium continue, continues on this article in the next one, and it says, uh, some experts say movies can function as a sort of cinema therapy for healing and growth. Because movies and television can penetrate our subconscious mind, yeah. the content can inspire, challenge, or heal our psyche. In, in other words, movies can change the way we think and feel for the better, or for the better. So they're saying for the better, but mm -hmm. also for the worse. Absolutely. We know that's implied there. Right. Uh, they're especially useful as an emotional release. Um, you can ask yourself, do I want this material to be imprinted in my subconscious mind? Mm -hmm. Along the same lines, a recent study determined that movies and television shows can help people with attachment issues. Watching healthy, stable relationships in a hypnotic state can make people feel more connected with others and subconsciously imprint the beliefs that healthy relationships are possible. Hmm. Another recent study similarly found that watching movies can challenge our stereotypes and beliefs. Characters can hum humanize a group of people, a political or social issue, or an event, especially when we identify with the characters so mm. yeah that's that's what I always say when people say it's just a movie it doesn't affect me then why is there such an outcry for exactly. um, uh, getting people on the on the screen what's it right. called for representation right we wouldn't right. have any cry out for representation if it's just a movie and it doesn't affect you exactly. and it doesn't change anything mm -hmm. but they're saying it can you know it can open your mind about stereotypes and this and that it can change your beliefs and, absolutely and marketing too yeah. well, why, why is oh, there such wow, a big yeah. outcry for marketing why is marketing such a big uh, and uh, uh, big bucks industry right because what you see affects you yes. and you can it can make you buy things it can absolutely. make you do things yeah and it really makes me question because um, we start off you know the, there's an agenda you know yeah. there's a, an agenda that can be in place so we do see mental health issues on the rise like the statistics say one in five people is actually battling with the mental wow. health disorder a mental health disorder and that's across age ranges like we're talking as young as three years old mm -hmm. all the way to the elderly population right one in five people and honestly that was a pre-covid statistic wow. and so it really makes you wonder when we're talking about media and we're talking about what you're being hypnotized to believe and to see and to feel if this is so positive why aren't we seeing a healing of the community a healing of people's hearts and minds we're actually seeing more fear yeah. more selfish more behaviors being modeled that are then being replicated into society and they are deleterious they're well, harmful look at the trends of what is in the media this yeah. is saying if you see a healthy relationship it can give you hope about that but how often do you see that yeah I mean I, I can just walk by the red box and it's like horror 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 dark comedy it's like it's also dark and violent everything's yes. coming yes. out even kids now have Absolutely. there's a horror genre for kids there's right. cartoons out there that are horror genre for mm -hmm. kids and so more and more of what we consume is negative, Absolutely. is uh, immoral or right. violent. So there's a billboard in my community when you're talking about horror, violence and fear. And, um, you know, the billboards are advertising jewelry. And so usually you will see a woman looking, you know, you know, like she's so important or beautiful in the jewelry or like, look at me, right? Like this high class. But I noticed that the billboard that was near our home the lady had on pearls, but she looked afraid. Oh, like wow. her face was literally like, like 
don't come near me kind of face and her eyes were even a little red but she was wow. advertising this pearl necklace and so it hmm. stood out to me like why does fear look attractive a woman afraid mm. looked attractive to you know advertise this um necklace and so hmm. um we can definitely see that our minds are being changed those of us who are deciding to continue um watching things that are harmful it's going to have an effect uh I, I read a whole article one time about subliminal messaging, and mm -hmm. it, it's proven fact. This isn't Absolutely. conspiracy theory. They've right. done it for years and years. But um, they would always use sex and death, and I was mm -hmm. like, I don't understand death or skulls. Like they would, I saw a map of, um, it was an article, it was an ad for a cigarette ad, yeah. and they showed, okay, we want a skull in the cloud over here. We mm -hmm. want uh, his silhouette to look like he has a pointy, like they made his hair point a little bit, so mm -hmm. it kind of associates with the devil and these mm -hmm. things. And, and the two, there was a couple, they were facing each other and they had cigarettes in their hands, but they were, they looked like sharp objects. They were facing each other and mm -hmm. they said it's supposed to psychologically make you think that these two are going to kill each other. And there was a sunset in the background, but the sun was actually setting into the water, mm. not behind the water. So it gives you an idea that the end of the world was happening. And I was like, I don't understand right. why death is, is a selling point. I can understand the sex and all that, but I, I, I read that. It's supposed to, the ad is supposed to put you in a state of, of panic of this is the end, mm. but this product is going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. oh. So it's like, I got to have that cigarette now yeah. because I'm in this state of fear and, and this is going to make me feel good or whatever. And so I don't know if that exactly. goes with that pearl necklace thing, but right. uh, this article continues, I think, and it's, it finishes up by saying, if movies can challenge our stereotypes, this is in the highlighted part. If movies can challenge our stereotypes, they can also create or install them. If movies can provide an emotional release, they can also stir up negative emotions. I love how unbiased this is. Experts recommend watching movies and TV shows strategically. Most importantly, watching too much TV has negative cognitive consequences. As mentioned earlier, excessive television consumption can decrease our intelligence. Hmm. Let's say that again, it can decrease our intelligence. When we do watch TV, it's critical to consume quality television, movies, and TV shows that add emotional and mental richness to our lives are the best. You can ask yourself, do I want this material to, to be imprinted in my subconscious mind? I think that's mm -hmm. something that we should all be asking ourselves. What does the Bible say? Whatever things are pure, lovely, right. you know, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. focus on these things, yes. but to stay away from the very appearance of evil. Right. And I think that's a no-brainer when it comes to horror movies. Should I? Should I watch it? Does it appear to be evil? Right. Does it bring you closer to God in any kind of way? And I don't think that these are just some arbitrary rules right. that are from some tyrannical dictator in the sky. Right. He cares about all of us. And right. if we're watching things like this, we're going to lose empathy for each other. Right. We're going to be more likely to act out in violence in these things. And God right. doesn't want that. He wants a world of love. And when I hear you say that, you know, my mind goes in two ways because it's one, I hear what you're saying to the person who remember those three reasons why people look at scary movies. Like if you're mm. the person who's like, I'm just, you know, it's unrealistic to me, you know, it's just entertaining, then question that, you know, like, yeah. why is it entertaining to you? What, mm. what is it that makes it funny, right? Mm. But then if you're the person that relates to it, right you're that person that's like man there's something about this that speaks to me then i would really encourage you to look into that in the sense of you know connecting with someone that can help you better uh, look at your thoughts objectively and say like has there been a trauma in your life has there mm. been something that's happened that causes you to connect or resonate with this to long for this or desire it like i remember um when i was going through my healing journey um i had so much anger you know, and so um, thinking about, like, I don't know, it, this is kind of an aside, but football, when they did that contact sport, you know, it's like, yes, boom, because in my mind, I was thinking about my, uh, the person that harmed me, mm. I, that I want them to be crushed. You get what mm. I'm saying? Um, and sometimes you'll see this in scary movies, as I'm told, like I, like I said, 
praise God for a little light. I haven't watched mm -hmm. in so long, <laughs> but um, I remember the idea of, you know, this person is being punished in a horrible way. Yeah, that's great, right. you know? Injustice. And so, yes, finally justice is being served, and that felt good to me mm -hmm. because I felt that the people that harmed me or my sister had gotten away with it, and so there was like a relatability there. There was a connection that needed to be healed, and that's what was drawing me to watch or participate in things that weren't healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking of the Bible when you talk about um, relating. I mean, the Bible doesn't omit the bad parts. That's right. The people That's true. like these stained glass window of people that we think about, the apostles, like they right. had to. Peter denied Christ. You know, David, a man of God's heart, own heart, uh, had a, a woman's husband murdered and right. he took her in adultery. Like, it doesn't omit the bad parts. That's and right. we can identify with probably anyone in there, right. someone mm -hmm. in there. But there's always the redemption story. That's right. And that's what these movies don't do. It's like, right. like, like Brittany said, at the end, you think, oh, happily ever after. But there's Jason popping up out of the water mm -hmm. in the end. And, yeah, um, exactly. Same thing. People try to justify Billie Eilish. They're like, oh, because of her, it helped me because I was depressed. And, and I can identify with her. OK, but is she giving you any hope? Right. Mm. See, that's where I identify with other people like Jeremy Camp, who right. He married a, a girl with terminal illness, thinking mm. that she was going to be healed, and she died. Wow. And he wrote a lot of music from that pain, and the right. music was always, God knows. Right. He knows how you feel. He's walked that suffering. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you get to hear, okay, somebody's been through something that exactly. I can relate to, or maybe worse. Exactly. But the redemption is, we have a God that can sympathize. We have a God mm -hmm. who's going to redeem us, and there's yes. going to be justice, yes. but it, it, vengeance is His. Yes, that's really good. And we don't have to look to those things for an escape as well. Mm. There are tools that we can actually use that improve our mental health, that can help us want to show up in our real lives and actually be helpful to others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I found these articles on Screen Crush. It was talking about horror movies and the actors that were on them. And it said, um, even though an actor's stellar performance is often rewarded with critical praise and sometimes even awards, the emotional damage from taking on a difficult role can last anywhere from a couple weeks to several years. Wow. Says these actors are seriously dedicated to their craft and it definitely shows in the finished product. But the thing is, once you tap into those parts of yourself, it's difficult to snap back to your normal self. Sometimes it even takes professional therapy to fully move forward from the project. And then, so Shelley Duvall was one of the, some of them were, were not horror movies, so I picked ones that were horror. But Shelley Duvall played in The Shining, and it said, Duvall has opened up about the physical and mental anguish that the production caused for her. And this is her quote, but after a while, your body rebels. It, it says, stop doing this to me. I don't want to cry every day. And sometimes just that thought alone would make me cry, she told Hollywood Reporter. To wake up on a Monday morning so early and realize that you had to cry all day because it was scheduled, I would just start crying. So her body and wow. I just like wow. impulsively cries. Wow. Um, Kyle Richards in Halloween, she was actually in this as a as a young child, mm -hmm. said later at the premiere. So she was when you're filming a movie, it's all out of order. You're not seeing the big picture. Right. Mm -hmm. Later at the premiere, she and a and a friend watched the movie for the first time in full. She says it was obviously not child appropriate, and we were both traumatized. She told Hollywood wow. or Halloween Daily News. Seeing it for the first time, all pieced together, was a very, very different movie. It was just really scary, and I really did sleep with my mom until I was 15 years old after that. Wow. I was terrified. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about whether you have PTSD before you watch it or does it cause it, I would say this caused right. PTSD. Right. Right. She was in the movie. In the movie. And, and, and it was fine because right. I'm sure she was just in a scene where she's in a living room or whatever, but when she watched it, she couldn't even sleep at night. Mm -hmm. She had to sleep with her mom until she was 15 who years was old. Who was this again? Uh, a girl that Kyle Richardson, Kyle Richards, who played in the movie Halloween. Halloween. Maybe Kyle is wow. a guy. I was yeah. thinking it showed a picture of a girl. But um, in the next slide here is another example. Janet Leigh from the movie Psycho said, I stopped taking showers and I only take baths, she revealed to New York Times mm -hmm. via the Vintage News. It's perfectly understandable that Lee would want to avoid showers because in that movie she was murdered in a shower as they serve as a psychopath as a psychopath psychological, psychological trigger, trigger. Mm -hmm. but what about when she's staying somewhere that doesn't have a bath re uh, readily available she answers 
When I'm someplace where I can only take a shower, I make sure the doors and windows of the house are locked, she explains. See? Wow. Now, this has wow. traumatized a person for their whole life. Mm -hmm. I was in a movie about I was in a shower and I got murdered. Now I can't take showers, and exactly. if I have to, I'm mm -hmm. gonna be a paranoid schizophrenic right. and locking everything because you've traumatized your entire life. Right, and see, and that goes back to what we were talking about, the brain knows no difference, yeah. right? Like, wow. you're acting this out, you're having to produce the emotions and the feelings of what mm -hmm. it would be like to be murdered in a shower, mm -hmm. and then you're seeing that the brain knows no difference. It's like, okay, this is what's happening. She's reacted as yes. if this happened to her. Wow. Exactly. If, some, if somebody really was in a situation where right. uh, someone's trying to kill you exactly. in a shower, you would be traumatized exactly. the same way. Yeah. And, mm, Oh, I was just gonna say I, I resonate with this because actually um, there was a movie that I had watched a horror movie called The Grudge mm -hmm. super scary at least mm -hmm. when I watched it right. it was really scary and it's just like those paranormal the long damp hair mm -hmm. like a bluish skin doing right. the spider walks bones cracking type of character right and um, I remember there was a scene where uh, the main character was taking a shower and then when she was um, washing her hair, she just felt like the hand there, mm -hmm. and then she would just see like all like it was just so crazy. Mm -hmm. And I literally, from seeing that movie, anytime I was going to watch a scary movie, I had to take a shower before then, right? And I had to turn off the scary movie and watch something like SpongeBob or something right. like that Light after hard. 5 p.m. Right? Like it was just so terrifying. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I resonate with that. There are just some scary movies that re they stick with you. You yeah. can't go like I I used to for longest when I would turn off the light downstairs yeah. and run up like I would run up the stairs because just that period of darkness yeah. like what right. if something's gonna chase me yeah <laughs> you know yeah. so it's just really it stays with you it's true I remember and this might date me but <laughs> watching Freddy Krueger movies oh, yeah. and it was always the you know when you lay in the bed something happens to you yeah. while you're in the bed and it's disgusting blood flying up at it. and so I'd be afraid to like lay down you know because I'm like oh what's gonna happen while I'm mm. sleeping on this bed and the, the brain knows no different. It, it believes it to be so, you mm -hmm. know, and so some people really have to um, get cognitive behavioral therapy or um, other types of therapy to be able to really heal from that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Absolutely. definitely PTSD. Uh, there's a thing here from Brad. Yeah, no, let me talk about this. This is fascinating. Uh, I pulled up a few uh, examples real quick from, uh, everyone's heard Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Jeffrey right. Dahmer mm -hmm. was a serial killer in the U.S. I think he was in the U.S. He's he? getting more publicity yeah, now. Yeah, more publicity. Uh, and uh, he said that he watched several movies were his favorite. He says The, uh, the Exorcist 3, uh, The Gemini Killer, and uh, he also walks, watched The Exorcist 1 and 2 were also his favorite. Interestingly enough, he, he liked uh, a few other movies too, like The Matrix, but he mm. said The uh, Exorcist was, Exorcist 3 was his favorite. The thing that caught him, and we did a short, an LED short about this, the thing had, that had caught him was that um, the next person he was going to kill ran out of his apartment. He said he was watching The Exorcist w when this whole thing started happening because he mm -hmm. would show The Exorcist to his, mm -hmm. his people before Victims. they would kill him. Oh, yeah. wow. kill him. So that's, that's one. I mean, that, that, so he said he liked these movies and that would trigger him to kill people. That's just one. So we think maybe Jeff was just one person that would that was uh, that would be interesting. This is an example. Jeffrey Dahmer was uh, was starting to get into the movie, so he wasn't concerned about the other other cuff. He started this crazy motion, sitting and rocking back and forth and making these strange noises like talking in tongues. Wow. That's what would happen when Jeffrey would watch this movie. That's straight up possession, bro. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking too. That so. movie is really scary too. So the next, next next slide I have this this is another uh, killer. It's documented that Martin Bryant, Australia's worst serial killer, who killed 35 people in 1996, was observed uh, uh, was obsessed with child's play movies. I mm. see. That's Chucky, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Na uh, uh, so he, uh, namely the villain Chucky, he was obsessed with the child's uh, like childlike characteristics of the doll and its vengeful tactics. It was even submitted to the uh, psychiatrist psychiatrist mm -hmm. uh, that the character was a major contributing factor to Bryant's massacre Whoa. I mean this is this is documented evidence this isn't just you know hearsay here's some other examples 
Uh, American school shootings in the mid-90s were influenced by the dream sequence in Leonardo DiCaprio's The ba Basketball Diaries. I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that Not one. Not a horror right. movie. But Not a horror movie? No. That's interesting, though. Um, where he, dressed in a trench coat, a black trench coat, and enters a schoolroom and begins to shoot. According to Ooh. the True TV, 14-year-old Brian, I'm not going to say his last name, uh, can, I, I can't, dressed in a long coat, entered his algebra class in Moses Lake City, Washington, and basically killed a bunch of people. That's mm -hmm. interesting, because that sounds just like the Columbine shooters. Exactly. And, and they blamed the Matrix and mm -hmm. Marilyn Manson and Doom as, as a video game. But... Yeah, that's like playing out yeah. the exact scene exactly. in a school, a school shooting wearing exactly. a trench coat. That's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow. I'm not going to skip these last two paragraphs. If people can read them, that's fine. But it's just more, more drama about that exact same scenario. Um, one of the other movies, uh, one of the other um, uh, inspired uh, genres or movies was Natural Born Killers. That movie's demented. Was man. it? Yeah, that had Woody Harrelson in it. And it was, uh, there was decapitation and everything. It was terrible. Yeah, uh, another student, uh, so so check this out. Another student who knew uh, Lou Cantitis, how do you say that? Lou Cantitis said that the the shooter had t thought it looked like a fun to go murder, a murdering spree like the one in wow. Natural Born Killers. Scream, everyone know, remember Scream, yeah. right? Mm. Scream, the Scream movies? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I grew up, that was a movie that came out, and unfortunately, I had seen that one. That was terrible. Mm. They've was, made TV a, series of it awful. now. It's still renewing itself. Mm. Yeah. I remember watching that and going, why did I watch this? This is uh, terrible. Uh, Scream uh, has influenced murders and or murder attempts as well. Um, he names a person that did murder, uh, donned a Scream costume and stabbed another person 30 times in England. Two wow. teens stabbed their friend. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. It talks about RoboCop. It talks about all this different stuff that has happened. It makes you wonder, mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. movies affecting us? And, but, but this is my real question. We know by these examples that this truly does affect other people. Mm -hmm. yes. right? It does truly affect serial killers to make them kill. What about the other 90% of people, 99% of people, whatever the statistic is, that don't? I, what is the difference? I guess maybe this is a question for you. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between that? And what, what is mm -hmm. it? Is it just these people are more, um, I mean, we know it affects us all. We right. It affects right. everybody. Mm. For example, this is a real life example, right. and uh, my wife's allowed me to, to tell this story. But uh, she, we decided we were going to get some acreage and move out of the country. Right. We, you know what my wife said? Beautiful. She said, I don't want to move out of the country. That's where murders happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Statistically, if you look at it, there's more murders in suburbia. There's more yeah. murders in the city than there are in the country. But what do the movies portray? The exactly. Wrong turn. Exactly. Yeah. I've seen that one too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so where you, go, you know, Saw movies, all this other stuff. Yeah, the cabin in the woods, it's always. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so cabin she said, no, we're not moving out. I'm scared to death to live out there. Mm. Well, she had unfortunately seen a lot of scary movies exactly. growing up, and that's what happened. So. It affects everybody, yeah. but why does it make some people murderers? Right, yeah. right. Man, I wish I could answer that question. I, I would have to say I, I'm not able, but what I can say is that we know that we're being primed. Yeah. We know that we're being conditioned. We know that we're being desensitized. Mm. Um, and, and when it comes to mental health, we know that there are people who have predispositions. Right, there are people who are going to be predisposition to depression and anxiety, and so we don't know what your predisposition will activate. Mm. Can I put it that way? And I actually want to share, and this is a, a, a really interesting fact because we're thinking about, you know, why does it affect some people and it doesn't affect others? I was actually looking at this article about depression, and I just wonder if the information will kind of shed light on what you're asking. And this says, does depression change your DNA? Wow. So, you know, that's really important to think about because your DNA makes up who you are and the legacy, like the children and your children's children and yeah. your children's children are all affected by your DNA and your DNA can be being changed by what you're doing and what's happening and a lot of people don't actually realize that wow. but look at this it says that um 
researchers from the UK have found evidence that depression doesn't just change our brains, it can also alter our DNA and the way our cells generate energy, okay? And this was in 2015. It says a team from, a well, from the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics investigated the genomes of more than 11,500 women with the hopes of finding genes that might contribute to the risk of depression, right? They're trying to answer that question, like, yeah. what caught what, why, do, why are some people at more risk for depression than others? Mm. That's what they wanted to know. It says, but instead, they stumbled across a signature of metabolic changes in their cells that appears to have been triggered by the disease. Okay, wow. let's go on. It says, the most notable discovery was that women who had stress-related depression, that is, depression that is associated with some kind of adversity during childhood. Now, just pause there. We're talking about... Um, scary movies and horror movies and we can have vicarious trauma you know right. we didn't necessarily experience it but we experienced it because someone else did we saw someone experience mm -hmm. it right um or we heard about their experience and we become traumatized by it okay so let's continue depression that is associated with some kind of adversity during childhood such as sexual abuse had more mitochondrial dna than their peers why is this important because the mitochondria are the powerhouse organelles that provide the energy for the rest of your cell and the increase in mitochondria dna led the researchers to believe that the energy needs of their cells had changed in response to the stress mm. So basically, your body is being changed due to the stress that you're under. Does that make sense? Yeah. And your energy requirements are becoming different based wow. on the stress that you're under. So this is really huge. And so we can see that structurally, something is happening to your very DNA under certain levels of stress. So it causes me to think when you talk about why do some people decide to become murderers while others do not? Well, we don't know what's on their DNA. Mm -hmm. We don't know what predispositions that they had. Okay, let's look at this. This is, this is huge. It says, after going back over their results, the researchers also found that women with stress-related depression had shorter telomeres than the healthy women. Telomeres are the caps at the end of our chromosomes that naturally shorten as we age. Hmm. And the team began to question whether this process had been sped up by the stress. So basically the idea is that you're actually aging faster wow. because of these telomeres. Does that make sense? Because the telomeres yeah. are talking about you, you're aging, they're shortening, and when they're shorter, it's because you're older. And so people who are having this experience, their telomeres are shorter. They're aging faster than maybe their peers or counterparts. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. And so really when we are, and, and the reason I brought this into this discussion is because people are willfully watching the horror movies and they're not realizing what can be being triggered or activated in their very DNA. Wow. You know, and the scripture even tells us, you know, I think you talked about it, um, guard your heart mm -hmm. with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And mm -hmm. to me, that principle is talking about, you know, how important it is to guard what you see, what you eat, what you intake, what's happening, because you don't know. Yeah. You don't know how it's actually affecting you, even on a cellular level, on a DNA mm -hmm. level, and how this will even, you know, you think, oh, it's just me. It's only affecting me. Mm. I watch this scary movie. It doesn't matter, right? Like, mm. but we don't realize, is it possible? And I'm just asking the question, is it possible that you can actually, you know, the symptoms that can come from watching these movies, right? Because this is talking about depression. But what symptoms can actually be arising for a person that is subjecting themselves to watching these scary movies, <laughs> right? And we talked about that. We talked about the health factors, what happens to your heart, what's right. happening to your body when you're watching it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what's happening to your mind. And the idea that I'm presenting is, is it possible that it could even be affecting your DNA? Mm, yeah, I mean, mm. uh, like coming out of the gothic culture myself, like, people who were into that were into horror movies and yeah. it comes with that as depression as well so right. I, I think if you submerge yourself in horror right. all the time you're probably gonna have uh, depression and this is a different topic but anime mm. um, which is filled with a lot of horror themes too but right. there's a real diagnosed thing now called yeah. post anime depression mm. uh, syndrome uh, it's PADS, PADS, P-A-D-S, post-animated depression syndrome. So it's really diagnosed and it's really like, you can look it up and see what to do about it or whatever, but it's like people are so obsessed with anime and into the story that when the story ends, 
they fall into a depression. Like when you right. get to the last, you know, final episode, you fall into a sense of depression because you've become so attached to that character and stuff, and it's like your best friend just died. Yeah. Right. And so just go, I'm, I'm only pointing that out to talk about depression. Right. Media can influence your mind yes. to the point of depression, yes. which can have DNA yes. uh, uh, changes alter in your, your DNA. DNA. But isn't that um, a fruit to something else going on? Because mm. I know, like, when I was going through depression, I went to TV and media because mm. I just right. want to get away from my life. It's right. Escape. You exactly. know, so yeah, yeah, so it's like. Is it scary movies that's the problem, or is it the reason behind why you're going to scary movies that's the problem? Right, right. I, or is I, it both? I would say both. Yeah. I, would, I would say that they're both the problem, right? It's just like, you know, the reason that I might turn to binge eating is because of the issues of my life, but the binge eating is a problem as well, you yeah. know, because of what it's, it's doing to my body, exactly. Right. And so um, the symptoms are causing issues. And I think it's really serious, and this is why for those of us who, you know, maybe we've been thinking about that we need help, you know, we need to talk to someone, but maybe we're putting it off and instead going to other ways of getting help like TV, you know what I'm saying? And thinking, well, at least I could just forget about everything. This is really serious. This is affecting potentially your generations, you know? Yeah. And what I love about mental health, which is really in the Bible, is that recovery is always possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if I have damaged myself and I have, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Recovery is possible. It doesn't have to end like that. Mm -hmm. God is my ultimate movie writer, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I don't have to worry about Chucky coming back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like <laughs> God knows how to take down Chucky. You you know, mm -hmm. and take him down for good, but I've got to go to him, you know, mm -hmm. and I've got to, when it comes to my mental health, don't just think that, oh, I'll just pray it away. I may need tools, tips, and skills, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to recover. You know, there may be patterns of thinking that I've adopted from watching these movies or other things in life, maybe watching my family mm -hmm. that are toxic, that need to be helped, and they can be from a biblical perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I thank you so much for being a guest on here because yeah. you've added so much that as out of our pay grade or whatever, um, do do you have you have a ministry? Is that yeah. something that people can reach out to you? And the ministry is here on the screen. It's yeah. pain unwasted. I love yeah. that um, title because yeah. I've noticed that my whole life. You know, yeah. you go through some trial and you think like, why is this happening to me? And it and it's painful in the in the process. But afterwards, you come out with empathy. You yes. do empathize. You can sympathize with people. Uh, because you've been there yeah. and so I love that because God can make all things work together for good what That's Satan right. means for evil That's right. God can mean for good so this is something people can reach you on or what is Absolutely. the ministry exactly? Yes exactly Pain and Wasted is our organization that my husband and I founded and basically we help people basically to learn tips tools and strategies on how to improve their mental health oh, but amazing. from a biblical perspective awesome. okay because a lot of times as Christians we know that there's an issue but we're concerned about who we're talking to mm -hmm. and what their philosophy philosophy is going to be, you know? And so we do that from a biblical perspective. We um, mainly engage high-performing professionals and entrepreneurs, but we do also do classes and seminars for churches and schools, just being able to help people recognize signs and symptoms and how to respond appropriately. Because a lot of times people see things, but they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I help this person? What am I to do that will be helpful and not harmful? Mm -hmm. And so we help train people, pastors, teachers, leaders in that realm as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's put that on the screen again so mm -hmm. people can see that. This is, here's all the social media. This is the website, and this is how you can reach out to Mia's ministry. And we hope that there's something on there that can benefit you. I hope that this episode was eye-opening. I hope that it was, you learned something. If you want to see more information like this, we do have a full-length documentary called Pseudology. Mm -hmm. Very informative. It doesn't even come from a, a Christian aspect, just the psychology, the um, science, the pure science of it. So we're going to read some comments, but I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We're so glad you guys were here. We love you, and we can't do this ministry without you. We'll see you guys next time on LED Live.